Yeah. First of all, uh, as far as I know, today is uh, Thanksgiving Day in the U.S. So first of all, I would like to thank Professor Choi and Professor Filatov to give me this chance to introduce my recent work. Uh, my name is Yang Guo. Uh, currently, I'm a, a faculty member working in Wenjian Liu's group in QITCS, Shandong University. Uh, I just joined uh, his group uh, last year, so I don't have new things to report. Uh, so today I would like to introduce my work during my postdoc. So I did my postdoc with Frank Mieser, and so I'm, I was the Alka developer. So today I'm going to introduce my work on single reference method, linear scaling single reference method, the perturbative triple correction for closed shell and open shell system. So first I would like to give an introduction about the RPO method and then I've introduced the uh, closed shell work and then open shell work. And the final part is uh, benchmark uh, using both closed shell and open shell DRPO CCS dependency algorithm. So <clears throat> uh, our, our aim is to solve the Schrodinger equation. This is a non-realistic Hamiltonian. So it contains uh, kinetic energy of electrons, nucleus, and also the cooler interactions between nu nuclear and electrons and uh, nuclear, nuclear, and electron, electrons. So in order to, in order to uh, simplify this uh, uh, Hamiltonian, so we usually use BO Hamilton, uh, we use BO approximation. And then um, my, my expertise is to solve the, the uh, time in, time time independent Schrodinger equation for electrons. So <clears throat> so in order to solve the, the electronic Schrodinger equation, so people developed various uh, uh, method, especially the single reference. A uh, lot of them are, are called single reference method because they are start from a Hartree fork uh, reference. So we know the the exact uh, the. The full CI is the exact answer of the uh, of uh, of the Schrodinger of the Schrodinger, Schrodinger equation. However, we couldn't uh, use full CI method to treat very large systems. Thus, we have to truncate our wave functions. So, people developed so-called perturbation theory, configuration interaction method, as well as the cup cluster method. So, those methods have different features. So. Uh, the MP2 method and the cup class method are size consistent method. Are, uh, so that means uh, the, there's no size consistent error if you use this uh, method to calculate the reaction energies, for example. That's why those, uh, those methods are, are most popular in real, uh, in real uh, studies of the reaction, chemical reactions. And another property of those uh, theory is uh, unitary invariant. Uh, as I will introduce uh, later, so this is the foundation for us to develop the local correlation method. The unitary invariant means uh, if you do a rotation within occupy space or virtual space, this method can reproduce the exactly the same uh, correlation energy. So let's have a look at the scaling of the most popular correlation method. For example, the MP2 scales n to the, n to the five and the CCSD parasites T scales n to the power of seven. So in, as far as I know, nowadays, if you study a system with more than 1000 basis function, it's very difficult to perform CCSD method on this system. Um, that's why people are developed a lot of uh, linear scaling method. So generally speaking, the linear scaling method can be divided into two uh, groups. The first group uh, I call the local property based method. So the divided and conquer developed by Wei Tao Yang and uh, Nak Professor Nakai belongs to uh, the, this uh, kind of uh, 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 method. And uh, as well as the FMO method, which have been introduced by Mark Gordon. And, uh, and the PFM, PFRMO method developed by Wenjian also belongs to uh, the local density based method. And another kind of uh, local property based method uh, 
are called fragment energy based methods. For example, the SMF method developed by Collins and the GPF method developed by uh, Shu Hua Li. And uh, there are also a lot of many body expansion methods, for example, the many body expansion method developed by Dan Truller and etc. Et so all these methods have a common feature. Like uh, there's no need to do a hard to fork calculation of the whole system. So there's another type of uh, uh, linear uh, 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 low scaling method, which I call local correlation method. So uh, it can be also divided into two subgroups. The first one is uh, the fragment-based local correlation method. For example, the clustering molecule developed by Shu Hua Li and the LNO method developed by Mihai Kale and the DEC method developed by the, by the uh, Paul Jorgensen as well as the incremental method. And uh, another type of local correlation method uh, maybe can be called direct local correlation method. The Peter Pooley and uh, Professor Warner are the pioneers of, on this uh, uh, direction. And uh, since around 2010, um, Frank Dees developed the, the DR, developed series of DLPO methods. So uh, recently this method is one of the most popular local correlation methods. And, uh, and for all these two uh, type of uh, local correlation method, there's also some common features. So at the beginning, you have to do a hard fork calculation of the whole system. And after that, you localize your octopi orbital or virtual orbital. Sometimes, the, uh, for example, in DRPO, we don't need to localize the virtual orbital. We just use PAO or PNO to construct the virtual space. And finally, based on this, those localized occupied or virtual orbital, we can compute, we can reduce the computational cost of the correlation uh, method uh, to compute the correlation energy approximately. So uh, in 2008, I, I combined the DRPO method with the, the, with the CM method. So in this paper, we discussed the both, uh, both uh, kind of method very clearly. If you are interested, you can read uh, this paper. And uh, so the DRPO method is quite famous now. So I would like to give you a brief introduce about the principle of the DRPO approximation, what DRPO approximation is. So this is the final, final expression of the correlation energies, right? So as I said, like MP2 or cup cluster, this energy is, uh, uh, those methods are unitary invariant with respect to the rotation of the occupied space or, or the virtual space. That means uh, we can use localized orbital to perform the, let's say, cup cluster calculations. So this is uh, 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 alkene molecules. So basically we can localize its occupied orbitals as well as the virtual orbitals. So, so if, we if we use the localized orbital, we can only consider the nearby pairs, pair energies in this expression. There's no need for us to consider, let's say, the pair KL because the correlation energy of pair KL is quite small and can be neglected or evaluated by very crude approximation. So the so the we we only need to consider such kind of nearby pairs. The nearby pairs will increase the linearly with the system size. Thus, we can truncate our occupied space. So after the truncation of the occupied space, we have to truncate our virtual space as well. So in let's say PA, in in the P, in the local correlation method by Peter Bullet and the Jordan Warner, they use PAOs. But in DRPO method, we use PNOs to represent the virtual space. So for each occupied orbital pairs, the number of PNO is a constant. That's why our method can achieve linear scaling. So uh, maybe different people have di different opinion about what PNO is. So this is my understanding about PNOs. So it's just like the compression of the, of the picture. For example, we have such kind of picture. So in computer, it's just like a, a matrix, a non-symmetric matrix. So we can use SVD 
to decompose this matrix. And then just keep the singular value with significant values. And we can neglect some uh, singular value with small uh, numbers. And uh, I think the, 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 the the spirit of the PNO just uh, quite similar as such kind of uh, picture compression. So up to now, uh, maybe this uh, this uh, the method list here is out of date. So up to now, uh, we already have a lot of uh, uh, DRPO methods for single reference, multi reference, as well as excited space and some multi layer uh, method as well. And, uh, and uh, most recently, uh, I developed the DRP on NFPD2 F12, and it will be released in the next uh, OCA. And, uh, but today, I'm going to introduce the, the DRP on Paris T for closed shell and open shell. And, uh, and most recently, Frank wrote a, a, a historical uh, review paper about OCA package. And, and for the people who are curious about why Alka is called Alka, you can find answer from this paper. And uh, now I, I will first start from the, the, my first work about closed shell iterative parasites T. So uh, maybe you are quite familiar with those equations already. So this is the working equation of cup clusters. In order to uh, in order to uh, handle all the amplitude, we have to truncate the cup cluster and uh, the most uh, the most popular one is the CCSB. So we just keep the singles and doubles in the excitation operator, and uh, in order to avoid the to solve the triples iteratively, so John Popo uh, 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 proposed the so-called parentheses T uh, method. So in, 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 if you use the canonical Hartree fock orbital, there's no need to, to, compute the, to compute the triples iteratively in parentheses T method. But if you use localized orbital, uh, the, 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 the amplitude are coupled by the off diagonal fork matrix element. So, uh, in order to use localized orbital to compute the parentheses T, in principle, you have to solve this residue equation and uh, solving the T, I, J, K, A, B, C iterative. Um, but uh, uh, but uh, that means you have to say all those T, I, J, K, A, B, C on either hard disk or in your memory. So it's a huge number of uh, amplitudes. So in 2000, in, in 2000 uh, Martin Schultz proposed the so-called P0 approximation. So in this approximation, although the localized occupied orbital is used, but the coupling between the off-diagonal folk matrix elements are completely neglected. Um, <clears throat> but uh, you can also consider uh, those couplings because uh, because in the DRPO or in, in Martin Schultz's work, um, the PAOs or PNOs are used. That means uh, for each triples, let's say IJK, and another triples, let's say IJL, they have different virtual space. Thus, you have to do a when you uh, when you compute this residue, you have to do a transformation between the two virtual space. That means you have to multiply uh, 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 a domain a, do a domain mapping uh, overlap matrix. So if you want to uh, if you want to implement the the the, the, the exact uh, triples using localized orbital and the PLs, you have to do a lot of uh, such kind of uh, domain transformation. Uh, that. that that's why at the beginning, uh, 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 my previous colleague Ripplinger didn't implement the iterative version of the parentheses T. Uh, what he implemented is uh, just the DRPO CSSD T0. So originally, uh, the, the, the DRPO CSSD parentheses T doesn't scale very well with the system size, but, but, in, uh, but in 2015, they significantly improved the original, pro, uh, original um, 
uh, uh, algorithm. And uh, now you can see the, the, the computational cost of the DRP CSD almost the same as a heart rate fork or, or the DFT calculation. Uh, the, the, the original DRP CSD T0 performs quite well for most of the systems, although it uh, introduced very big absolute error. But uh, in most of cases, we only care about the um, relative energies. We, we, so uh, due to the error cancellation, the T0 can always give you very good result. But in some special cases, uh, it, uh, the T0 algorithm will introduce big errors. For example, when people study such kind of uh, uh, atomization energies of the CNH4, even very tight thresholds are used in DRPO, CSD parameters. You can still find the T0 will increase uh, the, the, the error. So this is the error with respect to the canonical CSD parameters. You can see the CSD part doesn't introduce very large error, but the T0 do introduce very big error in, in computing such kind of atomization energies. So this is the kind of motivation for me to implement the iterative triple. So uh, I just uh, I just employed the equation proposed by Martin Schulz at the beginning. Uh, I, I showed before for the DRPO uh, CSD parameters T, and uh, but the original version doesn't work very well. Let me show you why. So I will take the penicillin molecule as an example. So so in this system, if we use step two TZVP, we have sixty four occupied. MO and 766 virtual orbitals, right? And in the CCSD part, we only have, we only have uh, a lot of pairs are neglected. We only 70, around seven, 700 uh, uh, pairs are survived. After that, we can construct the, the PNOs. So this is the density of the IJ pairs and we generalize this uh, density matrix and use a, a Use the cutoff parameter to truncate this density. Then we get the PNOs. So in this case, usually we for each occupied orbital pairs, we only have about thirty uh, PNOs. Thus, if we want to store the TIJAB in DRPO master, we don't need very large memory, right? But let's check the triple. So first, we have to construct. The, 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 the density of the, of the triple and then generalize it. In order to achieve very accurate results, we have to use tight thresholds than the PNO case in TNO. So in this case, for each triple IJK, in average, we have about 72 virtual orbitals. So in order to store this TIJK ABC for the penicillin molecules, we have to we have to use very large memories, right? So this is just a system be below 1,000 basis, basis functions. Uh, if we go, go to the even larger system, this is huge. And the computational cost of the original version also doesn't very, doesn't, also doesn't very, uh, uh, very good. Uh, thus, we, we carefully look at, look at it, the, 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 the the triples contributions. So the triples are classified into two groups, the strong triples and the weak triples. You can see we, we don't have we don't have many uh, strong triples. So these strong triples contribute 90% of the correlation energy. So for strong triples, we can use large TNOs. For the big triples, we can use very small TNOs. Thus we can achieve a very efficient implementation of the parasis T. Okay. I think I have to hurry up. So uh, with, uh, with, uh, with the strong and weak triples approximation, you can see the storage of the amplitude are significantly reduced and we can achieve very accurate CCSD parameters T result. So with the, the, the newly implemented iterative parameters T algorithm, I studied a few uh, test sets from GMTKN55 you can see the, those are results from the previous T0 algorithm. The absolute energy can, the deviation of the absolute energy can achieve 
almost 70 kb more. But after the, uh, but if you use the T, the Paris's T, it's significantly reduced. The relative energy also improved a little bit. And let's go back to the previous uh, atomization energy uh, uh, problem. You can see with the iterative uh, T, uh, the atomization energy also reduced. Uh, the error of the atomization energy also reduced compared with the canonical system C paraces T. Now let's move to my second part of my talk, the iterative T for the open shell phase. So uh, the, the previous uh, uh, DRPO CSFD have to have been iterated have been iterated for two, two generations. The first iteration is the LPO, and later my my colleague Masaki Saito implements the new uh, DRPO CSFD. So this uh, this method just based on one set of orbital. It's either ROHF orbital or QRO, or you can also use Hans orbitals. And the, the working equation for the open shell T is much, much more uh, complicated than the closed shell case. You can see this is the spin optical based uh, equations. And uh, we did the spin adaption for those equations. And uh, we also used uh, the index constraint to reduce the number of the amplitude. And uh, you can see we have alpha, 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 and beta, 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 and alpha, alpha, beta, and alpha, beta, beta, beta four cases. So those are just the case of the three alpha case. So the equation is very complicated. And, uh, but uh, finally, eventually we, we, I have implemented it. So uh, those are the uh, uh, brief, uh, uh, just a simple comparison between the two algorithms, the closed shell case and the open shell case. So they are slightly different because uh, in open shell case, uh, we couldn't store all the intermediate on the half disk for both strong and weak critical because uh, it will occupy too large uh, uh, memories because we have four sets of uh, uh, amplitude instead of one set of orbitals in the closed shell case. So we have to perform the T0 calculation two times. And uh, uh, let's check the scaling behavior of the, uh, the iterative triples. So you can see the, 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 for the T0 algorithm, the open shell case is just the two times as the closed shell case. This is because in the uh, T0 algorithm, we don't need, uh, we don't need to iterate the, the triple amplitude. So the integral transformation dominated the algorithm. So we have two set of uh, optos, the alpha and beta. So, uh, the integral transformation dominated the whole algorithm. That's why the, in the T0 case, it's about the, the ROHF algorithm is about two times lower than the, uh, than the uh, closed shell case. But in the, but in the iterative triple case, uh, uh, we have four sets of uh, orbitals in ROHF case. That's why, uh, and this is the dominant of, uh, dominant step in the in the uh, PCC calculation. That's why in the ROHF case, it's about four times than the closed shell case. This is because we have to solve four sets of uh, 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 equations for the parameters T. And uh, I did some benchmark calculation using a test set from GMTKN55, it's called RC21. You can see both the absolute, absolute energy of the, of the relative energy are improved if the parasis T is used. And I also did some application for a very large molecules. It contains more than 4,000 basis functions. And uh, this is how this molecule looks like. And, uh, and if you use, so our program have been parallelized. If you use the uh, if you use the uh, eight cores to run this calculation, the parent T takes about five days, and also the 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 CSC part also take about five days. So in total, this calculation take about ten days, and uh, you also need about one, ter one terabyte to store all the intermediate on your hard disk. I think it's uh, quite okay, and. Uh, Using both the RHF and the 
RO and uh, the, the, the open shell CSS, DLPU, CSS, DPAM, CSP. Uh, my colleague Dimitrios Liakos uh, did a, a comprehensive benchmark using the GFDPN55. It contains more than 2,400 2, atom uh, 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 molecules and, uh, and 1,500 reactions. So you can see with tight PNOs, the DRPNO uh, CTSD parent can always deliver very accurate reaction energy compared with the standard CTSD parent So those are some results for the more test set with DMTKN55. And now uh, I think I have convinced you that the DRPNO CTSD parent can deliver very accurate results and uh, you can use it because ALCA is free of charge for the uh, academia. Uh, and uh, and uh, uh, recently, uh, there is a paper written by Martin Hedegolden. They said, uh, more rob more they said uh, for, some, uh, uh, for some strongly correlated system, maybe we need uh, more correlation. And in order to, to calculate very big system, uh, we, maybe we need something like uh, DRP CSSD parameters T. Actually, since we have saved the whole triple sample cube on the hard disk, so it's possible for us to do even the full CCSD T. And uh, finally, I would like to thank my, uh, my previous boss and uh, my current boss, Frank and Benjamin Liu, for their general support and their help on my career and uh, science. And I also want to thank my collaborators, Christoph, Dimitrios, and Woodbeck, and Masaki, and Kenton. And thank you for your attention. Uh, Professor uh, Yang, thank you for this interesting talk. And we have